Hello again, my most amazing artists. Today, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite elements of art, which is space. And no, I'm not talking about outer space, even though I love astronomy. I'm talking about visual space. So what does that mean? Visual space is the area around or within an object that is taken up on your work of art. So when we're looking at space, we're talking about the space that's being occupied by whatever you drew or whatever you sculpted or whatever you painted, the space that that object takes up, or the area around that object. That's the negative space. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more next week. Today, what we're going to try to do is create the illusion of 3D space, three dimensions, in a 2D paper. So how do we create this illusion? There are four really simple steps that you can take to create the illusion of space in your artwork. We're going to talk about them today. The first thing I want to do is I want to show you a couple examples. When we're looking around the world, we see space all the time. I'm trying to get to this page here. Here we go. So if we're looking at this painting by Van Gogh, we'll notice that some of these objects are repeated, but it looks like they're getting farther away from us. For instance, these lamp posts. Okay, there's no way that this lamp post is so much bigger than these people way back here. I know that this lamp post isn't bigger than this lamp post in reality. But as it gets closer to me in space, it appears larger, okay? So we're going to talk about those four principles while looking at this painting. Let's take a check. Okay, so if we are looking at this image, there are a few things that I want you to notice. First off, what object appears closest to you? I'll give you a second to think about it. If you guess the tree, I would agree with you. I would also maybe agree that this boat is probably pretty close to us. But if you said the bridge, uh-uh, that's not right. And I know that you know this because we see things through our eyes all the time. We are able to process space. So when we're looking at this tree, we're looking for four things, okay? Let's talk about this for a second. Objects that are closer to us in space are bigger, overlapping, lower on the paper, and detailed. Okay, there are only a few exceptions to this rule if your object happens to be floating in space or flying. But most of the time, you're going you're gonna to see these four things, okay? So let's see if we can find them in this picture. Objects that are closer to us. So we are talking about this tree right here. Objects that are closer to us are bigger on the paper. Bigger. This tree is huge in comparison to these trees in the background. Okay? It takes up almost the entire paper. Is there overlap? Yes. When I'm talking about overlap, I'm talking about an object that is in front of another object. Okay? So in this case, my hand is overlapping my other hand. In this case, the tree is overlapping a lot of things. It overlaps this boat. It overlaps the water, the other um, greenery in the background. It overlaps this bridge. Look at that. It comes right in front of it. Okay. Is it lower on the paper? Well, yes. Don't get confused because this reaches all the way up to the sky. Look where that object meets the ground. Right here. That's pretty low on the paper and detailed. This tree has all kinds of brush strokes and different textures and different colors in it in comparison to maybe some of these details in these trees in the background. Okay, there's a lot more detail in objects that are closer to you. If you're really close to someone, you might be able to tell what their eye color is. If they're really far away from you, you're probably not going to see those things. Think about the textures you can see on things when you're close to them. Think about mountains when you're really far away from them, how blurry and hazy and um, kind of fuzzy they look because they have less detail. So we're looking for bold space, B-O-L-D. Bigger overlapping, lower, detailed, 
okay? If an object is close to you in space, you're probably going to see these four things, if not just one of them, if not all of them, okay? So let's look at a drawing that I just finished a second ago. Now, I know some of you are going to recognize this, okay? When we're looking at the characters in this drawing, we are looking for bold space. So let's talk about this briefly. An object that is really close to me. Think about where that is. An object that is closest to me. Probably isn't this. I would say it's probably one of these characters down here. I would even say it's probably this one. Or even just the tip of this box. Okay? This object is the biggest on my paper. It overlaps other things. There's lots of overlap happening here. There's overlap between these characters, overlap in the background, but the object that's closest to us is definitely being overlapped by the box. It's the lowest thing on the paper. It's way down here at the bottom, okay? And notice as it as they get farther away, notice the difference in size. Okay, the one that is closest to you, again, it's bigger. And it has the most detail. Even on a um, character that is mostly 2D and very flat, I'm creating texture. I can do this, um, create some details on the boxes. Okay. And if they're close to me, they should have all those details. If they're not close to me, they shouldn't have those details. Okay. So. What I want you to do is please come up with your own idea. Yes, you could draw what I drew, but I know you have a brain, okay? I want you to draw anything that you want. It could be a football field. It can be a map in your favorite video game. It could be unicorns galloping across a beautiful landscape. Whatever you want to make is fine, but I need to see all four things. Remember, the objects that are closest to you need to be bigger, overlapping, lower, and detailed. This is your rubric. Make sure you have all four things and have a wonderful time creating space in your artwork today.